final session with with uh, Manny Costing, for which is your candidate uh, for the uh, the upcoming elections. So being the only candidates uh, for this election, so he was uh, automatically elected. So I'll try by uh, I'll start with uh, congratulating Manny for uh, for his new positions to come. Uh, donc, euh, les, euh, vous avez les services d'interprète dans Zoom. Donc, c'est un peu comme la session principale. Si vous allez dans le bas de l'écran, vous avez un bouton « Interprétation euh, » et vous sélectionnez la langue que euh, vous désirez utiliser ou entendre. Euh, donc, euh, autant moi et Mani sommes bilingues. Donc, vous pouvez, euh, si vous avez, on va expliquer un peu comment ça fonctionne, mais... Euh, Lorsque vous pourrez intervenir, vous pouvez intervenir euh, dans la langue de votre choix, puis dans le fond, on pourra répondre la, la, aux questions, aux interrogations, s'il y a quelque chose. Uh, so, we're going to keep the mic uh, off, turned off for everyone for this session. Uh, but if you have a question for Manny, you can use the chat. So, in the chat box uh, down the, uh, the Zoom tool, you can select host and co-host and send your question there. So, you, uh, so uh, me and Manny will be able to see it. Uh, if, if we have time at the end of the session, uh, Manny may answer some, some of the questions. Uh, and we basically have to leave at uh, five before three. So, so this is my time. So maybe in half an hour, let's say. It's gonna be easier for that. Um, So since there's no uh, election per se uh, for the Atlantic, uh, it, it's a session for you to know many more. Uh, so we've prepared a set of questions for, for him to answer. So we'll be able to say uh, his visions on, on, uh, on those uh, different subjects. So Manny, if you're ready, I will go with the questions right now, unless you want to do uh, some introduction I'll do a bit of an introduction first, I guess. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Manny Costain, uh, Regional Director Elect for the Atlantic Region. Bon après-midi, uh, Mesdames et Messieurs, je me présente Manny Costain, uh, Directeur de la Région Atlantique ILU. Uh, merci d'être ici uh, cet après-midi. Uh, first of all, I guess I do want to acknowledge that the land in which I'm located on today is for traditional and unceded territory of the Abigwit Mi'kmaq First Nation. Um, I guess going back to myself a little bit, just a bit of background on my history with PIPs. I've been a steward since 2005. Um, I've been a subgroup president with the, the, with the AFS group, with the Summerside subgroup. I've been a vice president of the PEI branch. I've also served as the regional, uh, on the regional executive as a member at large, and also as the vice chair from 2012 to 2019. I've also most recently served as the AFS, um, on the AFS group as the CS regional rep, national secretary and national chief steward, uh, various positions that I've held within the group uh, from 2014 to 2021. So that's just a bit of background on me. Excellent, thank you. So uh, I'll go with the uh, first subject. So how does COVID-19 uh, COVID affect your plans for the uh, Atlantic region? Well, I guess for starters, it certainly makes face-to-face -face and, and personal interactions a little bit more difficult in one aspect. Uh, you lose that. Uh, I think um, the current regional director, I think Kim Skeynes, had a great idea with doing these, uh, not really town halls, but steward touch points that she does every couple of months. I think those are very beneficial for the stewards out there. Could be something worthwhile to expand on that with the branches. Um, in the region where maybe we do, whether it's every couple of months, maybe every quarter, or even once, once a year, I'd like to see them, I guess, more than once a year, uh, is, do, is do a virtual meeting uh, with the regional director, with the branches and try to, uh, try to interact with people that way, uh, with the branches. And then of course, with, uh, with New Brunswick, we have six separate employers in New Brunswick and make that interaction with them. Uh, because with not being around for a while, yes, people feel, um, They don't feel engaged, even less so with uh, with COVID on there now. So, I mean, just a couple of ideas that I have. Um, certainly open to more ideas um, from anybody on the floor, from anybody out in the regions. Um, various people, they know how to get a hold of me through email and whatever. Um, but that, I think that would be a good start with using this tool. We use this tool today to, to have these interactions. Um, 
I think we can expand on it somewhat. I see. Um, are you focused on the status quo for the Atlantic region or do you have any ideas for change? Can you discuss this with us? I think we've been, the Atlantic region I think has been pretty well represented and I guess pr pretty well in various various stages. I, I do think we've always maintained that we have a very, very well-trained steward network. Um, I, some things I'd like to expand on would be more specific training at, for the New Brunswick groups, for the separate employers that uh, that aren't aren't bound by the uh, you know by the federal sector that, that are treasury board or agencies like the CRA, for example. Um, again, I guess sorry, I'm drawing a bit of a blank. Um, I'm drawing an absolute blank now. Um, those would be a couple of ideas for change. Whether interacting, I think with with Facebook, we have a Facebook page, whether I put something in there every couple of months, expand on our newsletters. Uh, it's just to try to get communication back in there. I think the disconnect that we have right now is with, with the current board. There's, there's a lot of distress there. I don't think it's happened more recently. I think it's been over a period of time the last few years. And I think it's work. It's trying to work and refoster that, that, that trust with the region, uh, really connect with the members to make sure that all the members feel that they are being heard whether they're from a large group, whether they're from a small group, that their voice matters because it has to matter. They're a dues paying member, they need to matter. Merci, on va faire la, la prochaine en français euh, juste pour, euh, pour représenter la dualité linguistique de, de l'Atlantique. Ouais. Donc, euh, euh, qu'est-ce que tu penses des, euh, des, des quatre premières questions qui ont, eu, qui ont été euh, posées ce matin, euh, cet après-midi dans le, dans le débat? I'll answer this in the English, I think. Um, no problem. I guess what, I, what I've seen so far in, in regards to truth and reconciliation, I think, yes, um, to use a line from, from what Pre President Davio says, I think we have to make sure that the government has to, we keep their feet to the fire to make sure that they're going to actually follow through on what they're saying. Uh, it's one thing to say something and to say, oh, well, we, we believe in truth and reconciliation. Well, and it's another thing entirely to actually implement something. Uh, in regards to the vaccines, I've been asked this question. I actually responded to an individual yesterday that asked me a question on it. Um, the way I, I've approached it, I've looked at it and said, no matter what I say in regards to the mandates, um, it's a no win. It's a no win question. No matter what you say, somebody's not going to agree with you. Somebody's not going to be happy with what you say. So I've approached it with what my personal feelings are towards it. My feelings are is I would like to be in an office. Uh, that I feel safe in. Uh, so I'd feel more comfortable with people that are fully vaccinated. Um, so that makes me more or less agree with the mandates. Now, that being said, um, I wish there would have been more consultation from the get-go. My belief was what they would do is for those that either could not get the, could not get the vaccination, whether it be for religious reasons, whether it be for medical reasons, or, or quite simply by choice, is that what they would continue to telework from home And should they have had to go to the office, either be, either get the COVID questions that the departments ask, or at least that's what happens at the CRA, or that they have to provide a negative test. Um, those are what I can think of in regard to the, the questions. I know there was four, but those are the two that jump off the top of my head so far. Yeah, so the, the other one was about uh, teleworking. So allowing people to stay at home or not, depending on whether they, 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 what they prefer. Well, it's an interesting question. And looking back at the history, it's funny because prior to the pandemic, anybody that anybody that, that requested a, a formal telework arrangement, it was almost always met with a denial. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and it was like, oh crap, now we have to do something. So now it went from, okay, nobody can work from home to now everybody can work from home. Now, so far, at least with, with the Canada Revenue Agency, with what I've seen there and the consultation from there between the CRA and the AFS group, is what they're looking at with the workplace of the future. It's going to be a hybrid 50-50. Um, and we asked why 50%, and they, their answer was at the time is that they needed a number, and it was pretty much arbitrary. But it was going to be a combination of 50-50. Um, I would like to see work from home continue. Uh, I know for me personally, it works very well because I can have this laptop, for, for example, to run my unit to do my union work plus my work laptop running simultaneously, I can go back to back and forth. My fear is with it though, and this is what we're going to have to keep the pressure on, is 
There are going to be managers out there that are going to set arbitrary rules for their office. I don't understand why where we haven't met for 18 months or haven't been in the office very much for 18 months that we have to have minimum one day a week that somebody has to go into the office. Uh, we've proven that virtual teams can work. It's not a new concept for us at the agency, especially for those that are doing desk side support and IT support. They've been doing virtual teams for 10 years now, so it's not a new concept. So it can be done without people having to go into the office. I would, I guess the, the answer to the question, because I, I am being a bit long-winded to it, I would, I would like to see that the employees continue to have the choice whether they're more comfortable going to the office or more comfortable to stay home. The option should be there. Excellent, merci. Uh, so, so we're basically at, uh, do you have any last words for, for, for your, uh, the people you're representing in the Atlantic region? Um, I guess it's kind of like what I posted on the Facebook page when I, I found it that it was acclaimed. Um, I take this position with some excitement, but also with some nervousness. Um, I'm nervous. I'm anxious most most times. I'm anxious now when I get in front of a crowd. Anyway, I'm a bit better with how I, how I handle it. But there are times um, where I do get very nervous, and the anxiety gets the better of me. Um, I want to be able to, I guess, to continue to connect with the members of of the region. I want to make sure one of my biggest worries is, and it's been something that for the people that know my history in the Atlantic region is to make sure the separate employers, make sure the number of groups are looked after, uh, make sure that no one's left behind. Uh, the same with some of our smaller groups. Uh, we know the large groups like the AFS and the CS group, they have good networks, they can look after themselves. It's the smaller groups where you might only have a handful of members scattered out across the region. We need to make sure that they're looked after. Um, I, I'm a reluctant leader, I guess, in a sense, I don't see myself as as being the leader that has all the answers. I want to listen to my regional executive. I want to listen to the branch presidents. I want to listen to the steward network. And most importantly, I want to listen to the members to see what their concerns are. Um, you know, my, my lines are always open, whether it be by, by phone, like by text or by email. Um, I want to make sure that you're heard. We might not always agree or, uh, on a matter or have a difference of opinion, but you at least have the right to be heard. And that's the message that I want to get home or that to send home today is that everybody has a voice and everybody needs to be heard. Um, I've seen it enough in my, in my experiences within various constituent bodies in PIPs that some people are listened to, others are largely ignored. Uh, some people are given privileges more, more as opposed to the others. I'm not that type of person. I don't like it. Um, it really frustrates me and makes me angry to see stuff like that. So I just want to ensure everyone that everyone in this region has a voice. Merci beaucoup. Uh, so I've seen no questions in the chat. Uh, so maybe I'll wait a couple of seconds. But if there's no question, uh, I will post the link to the main room so you can decide on to uh, joining the room now or just wait for uh, maybe 10 minutes before the meeting. So, so the, the, the main meeting will resume in, um, in 20 minutes. So uh, 30 minutes, sorry. So at 3.05 uh, Ottawa time. So uh, 2.05 Atlantic time. Um, I'll just copy the link here and post that in the chat so that you have it handy. So this is the same link that you used for uh, the main session. So if you lose it for any reason, just go back to the web page, the PIPS web page, uh, and it's the same link. So I see no questions. So I thank you a lot, many, for for this session. So uh, it will it was recorded, so it will be available on the PIPS website within a few days, uh, and made available for everyone. So you should have started receiving the voting ballots. Uh, it's it's not like uh, everyone at the same time. So they started this morning. So you might receive it up until I think the 22nd of October. Uh, and if not, just send an email to election at pips.ca uh, and they'll be able to, to sort it out. So I'll thank you all and uh, we'll see you in half an hour in the main room. Merci tout le monde. Merci Manny. Merci beaucoup. Bonne journée tout le monde.
uh, have a great day, everyone. Thanks again.